All right, my people, programmers, we didn't forget about you guys this year. I think most of you know that the majority of us here, we do have degrees in computer science and programming backgrounds. In fact, our website, bestlaptop.deals, it is a custom build, and I was a software developer for 13 years. Well, today's video, it is going to be the equivalent of giving the same advice I'd give if I met a fellow programmer out and about who said, hey, Josh, what should I buy? I'm going to start with what makes a great software development laptop, and then I'm going to hand off to Sierra, who's going to walk you through our current top 10. So let's get into it. Firstly, the laptop needs to perform well. Any slowdowns in code compiles or running test cases, they can multiply very quickly and add up. As a general rule of thumb, I'd recommend a CPU that can hit a Cinebench score of 800 or above. That would be an Intel H or HX series processor. Now on the AMD side, Ryzen 7 or 9. If you're going for a Mac, anything M4 or better. When it comes to Qualcomm CPUs, they're not our favorites for programmers. Compatibility, it can be a bit of an issue. Laptops with them, they run the ARM version of Windows. So even if an application works on Windows, it may not work on that version of Windows. If you've done your research though, and you're sure your applications will run, totally fine, get a Qualcomm X Elite chip. Memory should be 32 gig. Programmers run more applications at the same time than regular users, and the apps you're coding themselves. They consume memory, of course, when you test them. If you're going for Apple, many MacBook Pros come with 24 gig. Even though I prefer 32, most devs will be totally fine with that. That is, of course, unless you're running virtual machines or, say, a lot of containers, they can chew up a lot of memory. If you need more than 32 gig as a coder, you probably already know you do. I used to test the performance of web applications. I generate a bunch of simultaneous clients to simulate high volume traffic. Each session chewed up a lot of memory, so I needed more than 32 gig. When it comes to the display, it is critical for software developers. You're going to be looking at a lot of small text all day, and IDEs, they have a ton of capabilities that you want to see really clearly. The amount of content that you can comfortably see on screen without needing to squint, that is a factor of the display size, its resolution, which really is its clarity and its brightness. Try to get a 16 inch or larger display, that's if you can. Get a resolution with a PPI higher than 200 pixels per inch, that should make small text nice and crisp. And go for a brightness above 400 nits. I've mentioned a bunch of numbers to try and hit here. Well, if you're wondering, where do you go to actually find those numbers? We share our test results on our website, bestlaptop.deals. Search for the laptop you're interested in and click test data. The keyboard. It's also obviously really important. You'll want a comfortable keyboard that's just satisfying to type on and doesn't have an odd layout. There is nothing worse than mispressing keys. Well, perhaps an uncomfortably warm feeling laptop with annoying fan noise. So you want a laptop without any of those kind of distractions. By the way, these are the qualitative things that really is what separates the laptop Sierra is going to go through from many of the other laptops that may look the same based on their specs. Now, many coders, they love to code in different locations. If that's you, you want a laptop to be light and portable. I'd say 4.5 pounds and under. Now, same goes for battery life. As a coder, you'll obviously appreciate one you can actually use unplugged. Be careful, some laptops, they throttle their performance a lot when you pull out the power. Finally, software compatibility. I've already covered that a little bit when I talked about the CPUs, but I'll add two more notes. Some developers like to run Linux. I frequently ran Linux when I was coding so that I was using the same local environment as the servers that my code was going to be running on. I wanted to ensure that everything would run. We test Linux on laptops that we feel are good for software developers. You'll find those test results towards the end of our individual laptop reviews. Those, once again, you can easily find from our website. There's a link right there. Finally, some devs are coding for games or AI. These developers should definitely look for a laptop with an NVIDIA GPU. All right, with that said, I'm going to hand over to Sierra to walk you through our current top 10. Now, some of these laptops are pretty pricey. If you can't afford one, please do not be discouraged. I learned to code off an Apple IIe. Just try to buy a laptop that gets you as close as possible to the things I just mentioned. And if you're watching this video a bit after we've published it, I definitely recommend once again heading over to our website. Sorry to keep mentioning it, but there is a list there called Best Laptops for Programmers. Basically, that list, we keep it up to date all the time, well after our videos go live. With that said, you've heard enough from me. Sierra, over to you. The MacBook Pro 14 is the daily driver of both of our website developers. Even back when I was in the dev world, a lot of people preferred to use one, like folks on the data analytics team and our UX designers. As someone who had to use Linux and log into Windows servers for my job, I never saw the appeal. But apparently, if you're in web dev or all your apps work on macOS, it's sort of a no-brainer. 
Part of the reason for this is that it's a super comfortable laptop to use with minimal annoyances like heat and fan noise. It can get warm if you don't run the fans, but luckily you can control them manually depending on what you're doing on it. Even with the fans on, it still stays relatively quiet compared to most laptops. It also has a large, bright, high-resolution screen, comfortable keyboard, and good battery life. It performs phenomenally well with the M4 Pro chip, which is the one we recommend for programmers. You get a better keyboard than the low-travel one in the base M5 model, which is a nice bonus. Best of all, you can actually get long-lasting battery life, even while coding, which can't be said for most laptops on this list. Most high-performing Windows laptops last three to four hours at most for this use case. If you need a larger screen for productivity, though, the MacBook Pro 16 is a great choice. You're just sacrificing a little portability. It's not too heavy, just a teensy bit more than the four and a half pound cutoff that we set for that category. It has all the same great things about the 14 inch with slightly better battery life thanks to its larger battery. We won't repeat the spiel, but it's a good one. If you're looking for a programming laptop that won't break the bank like the Macs and offers broader compatibility for game developers and Linux, the IdeaPad Pro 5i is our favorite pick. There is an AMD version, but we like the Intel one as it performs a bit better. This one even offers a dedicated RTX 5050 GPU. Like most Lenovo's, it has a very comfortable keyboard. Plus, it can come with a large, bright OLED display that exceeds our preferred 200 PPI marker at 2880 by 1800. It stays cool and quiet during most tasks, and it's lightweight. It even has decent battery life. It almost hit the 10 hour mark we set for office tasks. The only thing programmers might be concerned about is it's 16 gigs of soldered RAM in the lower tier CPU version. But if you bump up to the Ultra 9 285H processor, that becomes 32 gigs. Still soldered. This laptop is definitely my favorite pick and might even be better than the MacBook Pro for a lot of people. But let's talk about a laptop with a more powerful GPU. This is a major factor for some folks, as they like to play modern games on the side. Our top pick for you is the Legion 7i. It's an absolutely gorgeous, premium gaming laptop with a fantastic keyboard. It comes standard with 32 gigs of memory, and it is upgradable. It's lightweight for a 16-inch, has a large, bright display, and performs very well with its high-end Arrow Lake HX processor and high-wattage NVIDIA RTX 5070. Where the Legion 7i falters, like most gaming laptops, is in its poor battery life, and the fact that it has annoyances like heat and fan noise during performance use. It gets a bit louder and warmer than we'd like for a coder. It also has a lower PPI on its screen than many other laptops on this list, but for gamers, the lower resolution might actually be a boon as the GPU can render more frames. So we feel that could fall into pros or cons, depending on the person. If you're looking for something less gamery that still has a fantastic keyboard and an even better display, we'd recommend the Yoga Pro 9i. It has a higher resolution, brighter display than the Legion 7i, and it's a beautiful tandem OLED panel. It has minimal heat and fan noise for performance use and still performs well with its 32 gigs of RAM, an Arrow Lake H CPU, and an NVIDIA RTX 5060. It does have the option of a 5070, but the GPU isn't fed max wattage either way, so that's something to keep in mind. Where this one falls short is in its portability. It's a bit heavy and bulky compared to many of these others, and its battery life is poor. Another quick note on this one is that if you're doing heavy GPU tasks, the battery does drain on its highest performance settings. This shouldn't be an issue for most coders, but you can buy a higher wattage charger from Lenovo to resolve it if you're doing a lot of video editing or gaming. The next one is another pick for the coders slash gamers out there, the Zephyrus G16. We specifically like the 5070 Ti version as it offers more than eight gigs of VRAM and good performance for the cost. The G16 doesn't feed its GPU full power, which is more apparent on the 5080 and 5090 versions. So we feel they aren't as good of a value. This one performs well in CPU tasks with an Arrow Lake H chip from Intel and 32 gigs of memory comes standard. Despite its performance, it's lightweight and it feels compact for how large its screen is. It does have decent battery life too, just below the 10 hour standard we've set here. Something else it has over the Legion 7i is the fact that it stays cooler to the touch during performance tasks. Like the Legion though, you are dropping below that magic 200 PPI number thanks to its 2560 by 1600 panel. Again, this is a benefit for gamers. Now, unlike the Legion 7i and Zephyrus G16, Razer's Blade 16 manages to look and feel more premium than your average gaming laptop. It's built well while still being lightweight, and it doesn't look too gamery, except for the bright green Razer logo. It performs well with higher tier GPU options like the 5070 Ti or 5080 being fed high wattage and an AMD Ryzen 9 processor, although we are disappointed that it's currently only available with the lower performing 365 chip that Josh has. Another positive is that it stays quiet and cool most of the time if you're doing burst performance work like programming or video editing. 
It's a great laptop for a lot of users, but it doesn't have long battery life, and it's got the same screen resolution as the last two. The Blade specifically also has some annoyances with its buggy Razer Synapse software, crappy palm rejection on the trackpad, and the fact that you don't know if it's going to go to sleep properly in your back. These are all issues Josh has complained to me about on the Blade, even though he still likes it a lot. But don't get him started on how bad Razer support is. Full video going over that nightmare is linked below. Now we're going to get into some laptops without dedicated graphics, since a lot of coders don't need them and they just add extra bulk to your laptop. This year, Framework released their long-awaited Zen 5 version of the Framework 13, a beloved laptop among techies for its native Linux support and phenomenal repairability. Unlike all the ones we've gone over so far, it has a small 13.5-inch screen, but it does have a 3x2 aspect ratio, which means you can see more code on screen at once. It's the most lightweight and portable on our list, still has over 200 PPI, has the option for a powerful Ryzen 9 CPU, and I personally love its keyboard. It's very comfortable. It also has decent battery life, but not the best. Still good, considering it's smaller battery. Its main con is that it does get a bit too warm for comfort in performance use. This makes sense since it is the smallest chassis on our list and it only has one fan to cool itself. But some people are willing to make that sacrifice for such amazing portability. Next is one that might surprise you, a Lunar Lake laptop, the ThinkPad X915. Intel's Lunar Lake series is known for providing fantastic battery life while sacrificing CPU performance. But if you've been watching our videos this past week, you'll notice this one has come up a lot. Super premium, large screen, great keyboard and trackpad, great battery life, and so on. It really only falls short in CPU performance, like I said. But some coders are only working in light projects or on virtual machines, so that may not matter to everyone. If you don't need high multi-core performance, this is a fantastic laptop for coders in literally every other way. Our last one on this list is another budget pick like the IdeaPad Pro, Gigabyte's Aero X16. It's on sale for around $1,000, which is incredible considering it has 32 gigs of RAM. It may not be as powerful as most of these, but it still offers solid performance with its Ryzen 7 chip and mid-range NVIDIA GPU. It's also very portable and has decent battery life. On the other hand, its screen is probably the worst in this lineup with the worst colors, but that doesn't matter to everyone, especially if you're only looking at text all day and not doing any creative work. What might matter more to you is the fact that its keyboard isn't the most comfortable due to some deck flex, and it does get a bit warm and loud in performance use. If you're on a budget and need a better GPU than the IdeaPad offers, though, this is still probably your best pick. Thanks, Sierra. I hope this guide helped you pick your perfect programming laptop. Before you buy, make sure you do check our price tracker to ensure you're getting the best deal. Like, subscribe if you want to support what we're doing here. We would appreciate it. It's something free and easy you can do that really helps us grow. Plus. My mother, she said it makes her very proud. And obviously we want to make her very proud. Till next time, go do something awesome with your day and I will catch you later.